Hey y'all, Billy and the Homestead Honey along with the greatest Pyrenees from Permapastures Farm. Before we get into it, y'all, remember, Heritage Life Skills Conference coming up soon. Dr. William Fortune's gonna be there. We're gonna be there. A number of others are gonna be there. It's gonna be a great time. And you can also see a little bit of homesteading from more of a preparedness slant, which I think is something we can all use these days. Um, details are gonna be down below. All right, so this is going to be a very important and profound video for a number of people out there because we're going to talk about transition. Now, Michelle, why don't you explain to everybody, first of all, because we've talked about it a lot already. Explain what we have out here and how that began as far as our ground cover. Okay, so I think it's been a couple of years. I bought a bunch of strawberry plants and planted them through the forest in the orchard and they've taken over and they're an edible ground cover. So we have an area down at the bottom of the food forest where they haven't completely covered the ground yet. So we're gonna use our sweet potatoes, our annuals, until that time period when the strawberries can be transplanted and use them as a ground cover. Now, what's important to note also is that we have got to occupy that ground. Remember, once again, in the words of the great Jeff Lawton, if you don't find a way to occupy that ground because nature is modest, she hates to be naked, despite all the people running around these days, but I digress. <laughs> Nature wants to be covered. That soil, wants, right here where we're standing, it wants to be covered. So if you don't meet that requirement, if you don't put in something that's productive, those unfriendly weed regimes are going to take over. That's what brings us to the sweet potatoes. So we're going to use this annual to hold the space. And then when we harvest, then our perennials are going to go in. Let's go talk about how we're going to do it. All right, so we're at the bottom of the food forest and it's one of the areas that's less developed. But if you look around, we got comfrey, 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 comfrey. Well, that's almost a monocrop in this area. And that's precisely what we do not want. And as a little side note, I will point out the one tree I didn't put bone sauce on is the one where the deer actually got in here and did a little damage. All the others untouched because they have bone sauce on them. So just stupid me thinking that if I just hit enough of them, that would they would leave it alone just as a side note remember bone sauce is used primarily in orchard and uh food forest settings but here we are with ground we got a little bit of mulch down here but it's not beautiful so we got our comfrey coming out of here and the part of the reason this is bare is because this has been one of the areas where we go to harvest comfrey that we sell online okay well we're getting to the point where we're going to leave it alone this year but right here are the slips that we picked up the other day okay so ultimately we want this whole area that all of this ground cover we want this entire area to have ground cover not necessarily just mulch that you see just like you see uphill there well to make that transition we're at a time of year where there ain't no way on earth no way on earth we're going to be able to um start strawberries so the intent is is that these uh, sweet potatoes, believe me, they're going to run all over the place. These sweet potatoes are going to wind up getting to the point where they occupy this ground, keep the weeds out and everything else we don't want until we get to the point in the fall, we're basically going to pull these out. We may even just leave the sweet potatoes in the ground. Um, maybe not even pull them out to eat. The idea is, is that we're holding this space with our annuals until we're able to get in here with the perennials. Y'all, this is a tactic that we've been using for a long time, and it works. No drugs, no nothing. Plus, you could eat the sweet potato vines, too, because uh, the sweet potatoes probably don't won't do, like, wonderful down here, but you could eat the vines just as a green. Well, they might. I mean, who even knows? But it is not a great advantage to us to sit here. It is not of any great advantage to us to sit here and have these sweet potatoes do all they're doing down here, harvest them. It's a better advantage to us, like she said, to maybe just get the greens out of here, leave these sweet potatoes behind. We'll just have to play it by ear and see what it is we wanna do. Because honestly, at the end of the day, this entire area is going to have a ground cover of something that requires almost no work from us. Now keep in mind, that's also a double-edged sword. As we were just filming a little bit ago, I mean, Last year, we got 65 gallons of strawberries and honestly more because we stopped counting after 65 gallons. At this rate, we're going to have well over, probably even double that. 
of these kinds of strawberries, you know, the ones that you didn't get that are half ripe from the store. Um, so it, it creates a bigger burden, but that's a burden that you want, especially at a time where things are, you know, going through the roof in terms of what they cost. So we're going to fill this area up and um, then we're going to take you uphill and, to and show you how we're doing this also in the orchard setting in an entirely different environment. So as we're going through here, y'all, and this area becomes a little more fungal, you see things like this, this struggling blueberry. And um, look at it. We got a single blueberry on there right now. But as we increase the life in this soil using the methods we're talking about, all these blueberries that before for the last couple of years that were struggling are now really, this isn't the best example of it, but they are all starting to absolutely take off. So think about this. We got an edible ground cover, got an edible shrub layer, got an edible understory in terms of trees, even to a certain extent, an edible overstory, depending on how we choose to do this. Essentially, all seven layers will be down in this food forest. The only thing we're really missing at the present moment are, are, is the vine layer. But as we go, everything will be, not everything, it'll either be edible to us or maybe some of the animals we get. Well, technically these sweet potatoes really kinda are the vine layer until we get a perennial vine layer but we need to let these trees down here get a lot more mature before we go doing that sort of thing. All right, here we are in another space. It's up closer to the house. This is the area that will ultimately be turned into a mountain orchard. Now, back here is the area I was talking about clearing the other day. There's still a fair piece of work to do, but we're not there yet. But where we are, is that the bottom layer is already installed. It's about a year old and this stuff is blowing up. But we got exactly the same issue over here because of the extremely, I mean, you can see how extreme it is where Michelle is right now. Then we have a terrace where the uh, ram is and we're gonna do exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing. We, we do have some strawberries planted over here, but they haven't, this place isn't as fungal as everything else. We have a bunch of strawberries throughout here, but they're not ready to rock and roll. So exactly the same dog we took to hunt down there in the food forest is exactly what we're going to do up here. So Michelle, what are you, where are you planting them at? So I'm just finding really bare spots where it needs ground cover and I'm just going to plant some slips. Now here's the cool thing as she's doing that, I'll go ahead and tell you what's going to happen. These slips, and we're going to get a bunch more because we're all out of the ones that we, well, she's already planted quite a bit of this before we did this video. So she's just filling in some of the spots that she didn't do for the express purpose of showing you how we do it on the video. The idea is if we can put them up high, the, the, the uh, vines are gonna basically come all the way down this hill. In fact, if it's anything like we've done before, it's gonna come plumb out to where I'm standing right now. That's exactly what we want. And the idea, once again, is to use these annual sweet potatoes to hold the ground away from the unfriendly weed regimes until we put in the perennial stuff, which in our case is gonna be strawberries. It could be any number of other things, but you gotta love an edible ground cover, especially at a time where inflation is off the charts. All right, y'all, hopefully this has been a big blessing to you. I mean, ultimately we got a red bud popping out of here. We got all kinds of stuff. We got our comfrey. And this stuff essentially is going to grow, will help it grow around the stuff we don't necessarily want covered. All right, y'all, if you need anything else from us, bone sauce, comfrey, um, harvest ripe freeze dryers, seeds, you name it, storable food, we got it all down below. Go check us out at the website. Until next time, this is Billy on behalf of the Permaculture Print. I'm sorry, she didn't want to be called that anymore. The homestead, I'm, uh, Michelle from Permapastures Farm where permaculture is my passion. We'll see y'all next time.